Motel. Right now we're in the cemetery, so it's very fun. But we're here at the Clown Motel. We're going to do a few things to see if we can't catch anything. So come along with us. So this one over here is the Marajek No idea. Brothers? So oh, okay. This, this is number one. They yeah, were like exactly. nine point something last Yeah, night. this was really active. <laughs> Good catch. Okay, so they Frank and George died on June twentieth of nineteen oh seven due to a horrific accident at the Belmont mine. That day George went to visit his brother, Frank, at the mine as they were talking. Frank noticed that a loaded ore cart had gotten away and was coming down the hill. Frank swung onto the cart and pulled the brake handle trying to stop it. Unfortunately, the brake handle had previously broken and been replaced with an old shovel handle. He fell underneath the ore cart and it ran him over, oh, wow. killing him instantly. George tried to save him, but the ore cart ran over his ankles. He was taken to the hospital where they amputated both his legs. George's injuries were too, sev too severe and he died that night. Wow. Why would you amputate legs? Yeah, I know. That were just cut off. Yeah. No wonder he didn't survive. Exactly. It was, because uh, the doctors had no practice. <laughs> That's crazy stuff, though. Right? Uh, so back in that day. Right? Yeah. Okay. So number two. So number two. That's, yeah, Bill. Bill Murphy, what? It looks like Big Bill Murphy. Here. Hi guys. Oh, there we go. Compact room here. Ooh, why is somebody trying to pick you up? Wow, this is crazy. So 1911, U.S. Navy veteran. Cave in. Died in a cave in. At Liberty. I don't even have this on, but there's money, so somebody's offered him money. Oh wow. Yeah, there's four quarters in there. Interesting. Do you want to speak to us? Definitely. <laughs> okay. And what do you want to say? You're running for president. Well, that's nice to know. It, it is. <laughs> I will vote for you. Probably do more good than the people that are in right, Washington right. now. You would do great. <laughs> So this is the guy that I read about. Hey, Big Bill, how are you doing today? Hi. Come here and respect. Just want to say hi and thank you for saving all the people. This was the guy who kept on going down into the mines and, and bringing people up. And then he said he under the fire himself. Died while saving others. Yeah, so he was a hero. There's a watch. A watch and beads. It's like on is that on it? Okay. Stand? Yes. Something about women? Yeah. Lots of crystals. There's a, that's interesting, there's a star over here. I'm kind of curious to okay. tell you if this is a... These are, they look like they're Those are graves, too, yeah, yeah, unmarked, so. yeah. Well, they said that there were 3,000 people buried here. Okay. And there aren't that many graves. So, and a lot of them are buried on the other side of that hill. Oh, that, that's... Oh. Oh, this is the... Night Oh. The Robert Stone. Lived in Belmont, Nevada during the 1870s, born in 1840 in New York City, died in the county hospital of Tonopah. In pneumonia. They have a, a pneumonia in the body. Oh, they did, yeah. Excuse us, guys, we're just passing through. Oh, look at the little lizard. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and if any of you have something you want to say, let us know. Yes. On our journey. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I don't want to walk on those graves. Okay. George Devil Davis. Devil. I like that. Devil Davis. Okay. Member of the Eagles Lodge. Devil Davis. Did you see how he just died? Politician, owner of the Eureka Saloon, gunshot wound inflicted by his wife. <laughs> <laughs> he was the first African American in Tonopah. Oh, wow. He was known for being a jokester and a prankster and was beloved by the entire community, regardless of race. George worked hard becoming the, pol the political leader of the African American community and eventually came to own his own saloon, which he named the Eureka. However, George had a dark side. Witnesses said that George was an abusive husband. On the night of June 22nd, 1907, his wife Ruth came into the saloon and shot George in the back. Wow. She continued to fire as he went down. Ruth only served one year for his killing. Domestic abuse? Yeah. Even back then. Huh? Right. She just had the last word. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this hand carved cross here. And hand carved wood, the whole thing is, looks. Oh, so beautiful. Isn't that great? Copper? Yeah. Oh, no, that was painted. It's painted, yeah. That is so cool. Yeah, that is painted. Yeah. That is so cool. Drilled into live. Oh, plastic powder charge. So he blew up in the mine. Oh. A thousand at the thousand foot level. Oof. Wow. Okay, here's the sheriff. Sheriff. Sheriff Logan was serving his third term as sheriff when he was shot to death by an unruly gambler in the Manhattan Red Light District on April 7th, 1906. Uh -huh. According to his granddaughter and author, Jackie Bohr, Logan was unarmed and dressed only in his nightshirt. His last act was to prevent the piano player from shooting his assailant, who was later acquitted of the murder. Logan was uh, credited with making early Tonopah the most peaceful mining camp in the world. His loss profoundly affected the community. Wow, that's... Wow. It's neat or how... How much people make a chain effect on other people's lives. Right. You know? It's just kind of... A, Just as then, do, just as then, oh, just as they do today, uh, Tonopah residents came together to hold benefits and raise money for the boy's mother and Albert's widow. Died of a heart attack in front of the library. Oh. Was driving in an express wagon. Oh, that's awful young for a heart attack. Yeah, seventeen years. But you know. 20% of people did, yeah. people did die of broken hearts too. Oh, that's true. I mean, died. right before him. That's you know, very true. It yeah. could have been stress from. That makes sense. It. Yeah, you hear that a lot about 
married people that have been married forever and you know they all die about the same time. Yeah. Within six months of each other. Exactly. When one goes, the other one doesn't want to live. And we've got two times at close range in a gun shot by Indiana. Oh wow. Indian. Oh, Indian Tang Daro at Spanish Springs Roadhouse and Wood Out Cutting Camp. Wow. So killed by uh, Indians. Yeah. Fell in a ditch. I'm so sorry, baby. Wow. He fell in a ditch. Are these are really tragic right? deaths? Right? House of Fire at Round Mount New York. New York? House Fire. Wow. Yeah, right, yeah. That's the one I picked. That's yours. <laughs> here we go. Buried by rock while attempting to open a plugged ore chute no. in the silver top mine in Tonopah. Oh, no. I love, I love how they've done his, his yeah, name. Yeah, the... That is so cool. You have the coolest one. Because you're not going nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard to see because of the... Like put the, dirt in here. It's where the sun is. Yeah. Explosion on the 11th hundred foot level of the Belmont mine, native of Montenegro? Yeah, Montenegro. Oh, he's got another one like the other. Oh, the step, the one. Yeah, yeah. Here's, yeah. Utah native lived at Miller's, Nevada. A bad relative? Is that what it says? A bad depart. Oh, a sad departure. Oh, a sad departure. It has a, a person. Oh, it does. Yeah. A sad departure. Henry Hoppenberger, age 42, uh. burned to death. Oh gosh. I'm sorry, honey. Sabina Veralt, uh, story starts in New York City, where she and her friend Eliza Brown ran a love syndicate. The women claimed to be wealthy widows. They would seduce rich men into giving them expensive gifts and money. One man fell in love with Bina. When she refused his attentions and did not return his gifts, he went to the authorities. Bina was arrested and was it was estimated that the two women collected about $100,000 in fine clothing, jewelry, and money, which in today's dollars would amount to $2.5 million. <laughs> During the trial, Vina pawned some diamond rings and fled. About a year later, she found herself in Tonopah. Her time on the run had taken its toll, and she died of alcoholism. Her death had made headlines around the world. That's amazing. Somebody left a quarter on there. Yeah. Lived an interesting life. Girl. I think I have a, I might have a dime. Maybe. You lived. No. Nah. <laughs> Sorry, you did. I did. Never arrested, yeah. yeah, I know. She got away with it. Yeah. But then she didn't because of the end. Well, yeah, yeah. She, she paid for it. She paid for it. Yeah. That's always the hard thing. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like karma, right? Right. You gotta pay for it in one way or another. Right. You either gotta. So you can have fun while you're young, have fun while you're Now, what is this? Stuffed pig over here, or whatever it is. Oh, well, let's look. Let's... Hi, guys. I'm Sharon Samuels. I'm, I'm filming you. 
Is that a bear? It is a bear. Same, same company. Same company. Oh, oh my gosh. Cute. Oh. Can you any sense in no, no details in this one? That should be like a Steve for something. I was looking, <laughs> that's what I was looking for because he's real, real stiff. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you so, so much for having us. Yeah, hope you're resting well. It's so nice and peaceful. It is. It's beautiful. There we go. So don't come with us. I'll be back. Yep, stay here. That's a beautiful heart. Gives <laughs> you time to do that. Well, does that happen?
1908 during Goldfield's March of Pro Progress. The Las Vegas and Tonopah Railroad Company ran its main line along the graves in order to place its terminal as close to the business business di district as possible. The railroad company didn't want passengers stepping off the train onto graves, and the city didn't want graves near the largest hotel. A group of men known as official ghouls unearthed the remains late at night, moving them to this cemetery. Oh, yeah. So that's why they're out here. We were wondering. Hi guys, I'm just passing through. Please excuse me. It's been kind of worn off, huh? This whole thing has been damaged. Yeah. You know, so this is something that I have always thought about. Is uh I love that people are now starting to do some of this stuff. They're uh -huh. going into, like, into cemeteries, and they're getting, like, information about people. Right. So in that way they can, like, give them a proper, you know, place. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I feel like there should be directories. Remember the phone book? Yeah. I feel like there should be a phone book at every, yeah, at every single cemetery. Yeah, so you can actually and you go should in. Actually, and, and it doesn't even have to be, like, this is where they are. Right. But it could be, like, this is who is here. Right. And this is what they've done. Uh -huh. This is what, you know, we know of them. A little obituary on each of them yeah, as far as their life and what know, they accomplished. You know that there was an obituary somewhere for these people, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. So, like... And it's all that's like, been lost. It's a one-time thing in the newspaper. Right, right. Yeah. So I just feel like there, there should be better historians in this world that are getting that information right. and putting it together. So then that way there are people that are out here like us mm -hmm. that can just be like, oh my gosh, look at this. Yeah. You know? yeah. like, and then those books can be sold. Sure. Because, I mean, if you think about it, I'm yeah. not going to sit here and read it. No. Uh, like that, but I'll uh, pay you $10 to get exactly. it. Exactly. You know? Yeah, <laughs> like, just to see that. Because a lot of these people's lives are extremely interesting. Yeah. I mean, that, you know. And, I mean, you can have just three or four people in this entire place that you can write a book about. Exactly. Alexander Labyrinth. Born in 1910 and died in 1995, so he had a good life. Yeah, 85, 85. years old. Yeah, you had a good life, Hale. This is interesting. So this is kind of a hodgepodge of, of early pioneers plus recent yeah. recent people. Well, clearly these new ones are, are newer. Right, right. right. So let's go to like this one over here. Yeah. I know I'm standing on one of you. <laughs> I know, there's not really not a way to know. Oh, oh! Sorry. <laughs> See, I told you I don't really scream. I bet I, the love was a nice little squeak. Yeah. <laughs> Rose and Tuhei. Age 33. Father was James, mother Marianne. Thirty-three. She clearly was a spinster. And she wanted a white picket fence. Yeah. There's a couple of them. There's another one over there. A few white picket fences around. These little uh, things are kind of itchy, huh? Yeah. I was just saying, I need pants for this. Yeah, really. Yeah. This is not the outfit for cemetery fucking picking. Oh, look at this. This guy died in 1936, and he was gassed and shell-shocked. Oh, gosh. In World War One. Wow. Oh, so this is the dad. That's the dad, well, and that's the, the son. son. He was a saloon man and cowboy. Yeah. True cowboy. And the son died before the... The daddy? The dad, yeah. 
Is it? That's gorgeous. Yes. Look at you, girl. <laughs> Oh, honey, I am so sorry. I'm just standing on you. Girl. Can you read that? This is amazing. No, this Mary is. This is neat. Lu Loopton. Loopton. Mary Loopton. What does that say? Native? Is yeah, native it? of... I am, it's K-I-L-K. E N R R Y Kilgary? Ireland. Ireland, yeah. Okay, she's a native of Ireland. Okay, I'm sorry, baby. We Died in 1921, born 1848. Wow. So she was 73. A desert flower. Probably and we don't even know her. who's here. to spend any money putting plaques up but like I know. just fucking put a book together because we're all nosy as shit all <laughs> of us, but you know the majority of us are nosy as shit and we want to hear about everybody else's stories this is why we have reality tv as a uh, such a big commodity right now it's exactly thing, yeah you know people want to know about other people's lives And all the little placards that they did have are all missing yeah, or gone. Well, and those are really hard because they're paper. What they do is they write, they just write, it, in write and, it with paper yeah. and then they put it in there. And because of the sun, it just gets sun bleached again. So it's like, this, uh, this weather just doesn't do No, well. it's not, not the, look, I like it when they have pictures too. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. And it stayed up pretty well. This is 1933. Yeah, this it's, thing it's almost 100 years. 90 wow. years. Yeah. Cool, this little scroll thing is going on, I think. I've never seen one like it. Hi, guys. Now, this is new, yeah. Well, not new, 1920, Sorry. but. <laughs> yeah, 1920. He's got a cross on him. It's crazy. Huh. Just a different way of doing it. Yeah. Gotta be unique. Right. Oh, look at him. It's a spider. Oh, Isn't wow. Cool? Isn't he cool? Yeah, he is cool. <laughs> he blends in with the... Uh, yeah. I thought it was just like a thing blowing in the wind. No, that is actually a living being huh. running around right there. Cute. Has a little furry back. Yeah. <laughs> what are those? Are they plastic? No, they're painted. Oh, how weird is that? That is really weird. Yeah, because you can see where oh, yeah. half, of, half it, of it's... It's not like this is a lacquer that's the, that they yeah, have they put in. This is the real stuff there. Yeah. I'm sorry, babe. I was just looking at your rock sweet. Here. Is that what's making noise? Oh yeah. The the the, the bee, I know. Two thousand two. That's kinda cool. Rosemary, I'm sure you don't get very many visitors. Can I bring two flowers for you, sweetheart? Oh, you have beautiful rocks. Babe. Same type of thing, but smaller oh, very rocks. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, see, that's weird. She actually has like crystals and quartz. Yeah, and yeah. Things in hers, where this one has the thing of crystal in the center. Right. Almost looks like a heart. Like it used to be, maybe. Oh, yeah. Oh wow, yeah. yeah.
got quite a bit of stuff going on here too, actually. Yeah. And over there too, there's an angel. Yeah. Look how cool these rocks are. Yeah. Love so the, all the layers. <laughs> I love the car part to hold their light. Yeah. <laughs> this one looks like hit by rock when blasting in grave. Jesus. Oh, gosh. He's a grave digger. Yeah, and he was blasting oh. in. Oh, no. He's a Cemetery sexton and grave digger. My goodness. Baby. 73 when he did it there. What are you blasting graves for? He's probably trying to dig a grave and they had to blast through the rock, rock to, in order to make it big enough, you know, oh deep enough. Gosh. See, now these are actually headstones. Yeah. Because they're actually stones. They are, they can't read any of them. It's a baby here though. Yeah, you can't read any of these. No. After attempting to murder a young lady, he had a drink and a cigar at the Splash Inn near the brewery, walked out and shot himself. Oh gosh. Uh, suicide. Yep, murder suicide. Drowned in a water barrel. Oh, oh gosh. Age two. Oh. Two. Oh. Oh. That's sad, baby. Sad. Wow. Murdered by John Rocket. Over a woman. Over a woman that worked in Goldfield Lower, Dis Lower District. Shit. Right. <laughs> oh, he was a bartender. Oh, there you he go. was 28 years old. Wow. He was a bartender and he got shot over another, over a woman. It wasn't even his girlfriend. No. Nope. Could have been. Or he wanted it to be. Right. He probably wanted it. To yeah. Be. Here you go. Goldfield laundry worker. Okay. We needed that. Yeah. Not trying to be disrespectful, guys. Okay. Wow, that's so cool. Injury sustained at the Mohawk Mine. Wow. Well, I'm sure that this is all depression glass, so it's all sitting yep. here in the, in the sun. In the sun. Just getting warm. Just getting depressed. <laughs> right. This one doesn't say. Oh, baby boy. Again. Wow. 1917. God, it's so pretty, too. Isn't it gorgeous? The iridescent. Yeah. Of it. Oh, my gosh. So pretty. Yeah, the, the glass in those days was yeah. just really, real glass. Yeah. It was really Definitely. cool. Oh, look at this bunny rabbit. Mary Sambach. Some botch, nine years old, died in the pneumonia. Morning. Thank you for letting us come and visit you. Yes, thank you so much. Be at peace and at rest. <laughs>